hello friends welcome to my youtube channel today in this video we are going to discuss about low costs which is known to cause the highest economic loss among the animals let's start from its introduction its scientific name is cystrocera gregaria and belongs to the order orthoptera it is the order of grasshoppers and mole crickets it belongs to the family acridiri which is also called the family of short horned grasshoppers now let's talk about its morphology it has two forms solitary form and gregarious form solitary form of both sexes is green to brown in color reflecting the environment and their pronota bear convex crests the gregary form male is yellow with reddish markings whereas the female is light brown in color let's take a look over the difference between these phases the solitary form behaves independently whereas gregarious form behaves as a cohesive unit solitary form repels the other locusts and prefers to be alone whereas gregary form is attracted to conspecific and prefers to be in swarm solitary form walks slowly by creeping whereas gregary form walks rapidly solitary form is active mostly at night showing nocturnal behavior whereas gregary form shows diurnal behavior solitary form eats very less varieties of plants and hence it is diet restricted whereas the gregary form eats a lot of varieties of plants and hence is of diet broad so we can conclude that we have no any economic harm by the solitary form but gregary form causes the highest economic losses to our crops than any other animal species on earth life cycle life cycle of desert locusts consists of three stages the eggs the nymph and known as hopper and the winged adult copulation takes place when a mature male hops onto the back of a mature female and grips her body with his legs sperm is transferred from the tip of his abdomen to the tip of hers where it is stored the process takes several hours and one insemination is sufficient for a number of batches of eggs the female locust lays eggs in warm and moist soil in close proximity to other egg laying females she probes the soil with her abdomen and digs a hole into which an egg pod containing up to 100 eggs is deposited to a depth of about 10 cm the eggs are surrounded by a foam and this hardens into a membrane and plugs the hole above the egg pod the eggs hatch in 2 weeks or more according to the temperature the newly hatched nymph soon begins to feed if it is a gregarious individual it is attracted to other hoppers and they group together otherwise it stays alone the gregary form passes through 6 instars whereas solitary form passes through 5 instars after fifth molt it is soft and pink with drooping wings but after a few days the cuticle hardens and hemolymph is pumped into the wings which stiffens them maturation can occur in 2 to 4 weeks when food supply and weather conditions are suitable but may take up to 6 months when they are less ideal there are 2 to 5 generations in an year ecology and swarming desert locusts have solitary and gregarious phase a type of polyphenism solitary locusts can behave gregariously within few hours of being placed in a crowded situation while gregarious locusts need one to more generation to become solitary when reared in isolation the change from uh, an innocuous solitary insect to a voracious gregarious one normally follows a period of drought when rainfalls and vegetation flushes occur in major locust breeding locations when they fully transform into gregarious form their bodies become shorter and give off a pheromone that causes them to be attracted to each other enhancing hopper band and subsequently swamp formation occurs the nymphal pheromone is different than the adult one so when uh, 
Hoppers are exposed to adult pheromone. Hoppers become confused and disoriented as they apparently can no longer smell each other. Do visual and tactile stimuli remain? After a few days, the hopper bands disintegrate and those escape predation become solitary again. This effect could aid locust control in future. Locust swarms can fly with the wind at roughly the speed of wind. They can cover up to 100 to 200 km a day and can fly up to 2000 meters above the sea level. So, the swarms cannot cross the tall mountain ranges like Atlas, the Hindu Kush or the Himalayas. A single swarm can cover up to, to uh, 1200 km square and can contain between 40 to 80 million locusts per km square. They can live between 3 to 6 months and a 10 to 16 fold increase in locust number occurs from one generation to the next. Crop loss They consume an estimated equivalent to their body weight 2 gram each day in green vegetation. They are polyphagous and can feed on leaves, shoots, flowers, fruits, seeds, stems and bark. Nearly all crops and non-crops are eaten, including fruits, vegetables, pulses, grasses, rice, maize, wheat, etc. Control Chemical Insecticides We can spray chemical pesticides in small concentrated doses by vehicle-mounted and aerial sprayers at ultra-low volume rates of application. As Chemical insecticides harms both the environment and the human beings. This method cannot be taken as a major solution. Biopesticides We can use biopesticides including fungi, bacteria, neem extract and pheromones. As biopesticides take longer time to kill insects although it has no any side effect on the environment, this method cannot be applied for long term. Natural enemies. We can use their natural enemies like predatory wasps and flies, parasited wasps, predatory beetle larvae, birds and reptiles. These are effective at keeping solitary populations in check but are of limited effects against the gregarious locusts because of the enormous numbers of ins insects in swamps and bands. Mechanical means. For small scale, farmers can use mechanical means of killing locusts such as digging trenches and boring hopper bands. The locust swamps also can be scared away from the field by making noises, burning tires or other methods. Once again, these methods work for small scale. Feed for chickens This method is applied in Pakistan. The government announced to buy locusts and they used these locusts in chicken feed. These uh, insects are high source of protein and contain 70% protein as compared to soybean 40% protein. Also the insects are easy to collect by using trap nets during night time as they don't fly at night. This method is a modern method and can be applied in a large scale for a long run. Eating by the human beings This method may sound crazy for the people of countries like Nepal, but in the countries like Israel, African countries, they are the famous and delicious dishes and also are the great source of protein.